All right, Paul, so you've gone through and you've used physics to calculate that all of this stuff, when it collapses, gravity should form a big disk. But it's a really big disk. It's a lot bigger than our solar system. Yes, it's, uh, we, everything comes down to some sort of spinning disk of gas, but it's a spinning disk of gas that's half a light year across. It's a thousand times bigger than our solar system. My theory doesn't explain how, there's just too much angular momentum. These things are rotating too fast. So now, when you did your um, calculation, you made some approximations. You assumed everything was nice and orderly, and yet we've seen those giant molecular clouds look like train wrecks. So it's going to be messy. It's not going to be nice and orderly like you assumed. So I really think what we, you should do is to use a computer simulation to look at this. Yes, when things are really messy and complicated, call in a computer. Luckily, uh, Matthew Bate at the University of Exeter has done this for us. And here we've got a supercomputer simulation uh, of the collapse of a giant molecular cloud. Well, that doesn't look smooth and orderly. So you remember the same process, we've already talked about how you do n-body calculations. You have a whole bunch of imaginary particles and you watch them moving under mutual gravity. This is a bit more complicated than that because you also have to allow for gas pressure, gas cooling, and gas temperature. So what he did was he put a sphere of gas and gave it some random motion, random densities, and he's now following these things as they, they move. And these white dots are where they actually turn into solar systems. What he actually does in the simulation is whatever the gas gets within about... 30 or 40 astronomical units, the size of a solar system, it just counts as a dot. And it turns into a, what he would call a star or something. Yes. So each of these dots probably does have a spinning disk around it, but they're much smaller. The way you get rid of the angular momentum is by having these different dots orbiting around each other. So you get a lot of angular momentum in two stars, a binary star or a cluster of stars orbiting around. That mops up most of the angular momentum, leaving only a little bit left in each of these individual dots to form a spinning disk. All right, so what you're saying is, is that each one of these spinning disks is going to look like a sensible mini proto solar system of our own with a sort of a, a proto sun in the center and then other things which presumably are where the planets are going to be formed out of? Yes, this is the idea. Because you can mop up most of the angular momentum in a realistic simulation of the relative motion of the stars, that means you get a spinning disk of gas which could be much smaller. And so this is called a protoplanetary disk, and this is an artist's impression of one of these things. Okay, well, artist impressions are great, but I'm kind of into reality. So if we go out and we look at one of these molecular clouds that's kind of advanced, we should see things like this if they're real. And indeed we do. Here are some pictures of the Orion Nebula, and you can see these disk-shaped blobs here. I mean, let's zoom in on that one over there. It's like some sort of evil eye, I guess. Okay. But what you've oh, seen I see. Is so this is the proto-sun, and then that's the stuff that you think the planets are going to be formed out of. Yes. And you can see more of these things. These are what are called debris disks. In this case, we've blocked out the light from the center with a, a coronagraph, a little obstacle in your telescope to block out the light, stop it from blinding you. And you can see, in this case, oh. edge-on. Yeah, they're very long and thin. They really are little disks. They're almost like a little record going around the, uh, the star. So these things really do seem to exist. But there's a problem. I mean, we've got all this gas raining down, and because of the relative motion of the stars, you can mop up the angular momentum, and what's left will form the spinning disk. But most of the mass in one of these disks is not going to be in the center, at least to begin with. It's going to be out of the spinning disk. Somehow, we need to move most of that mass into the center, because as we know in our own solar system, the mass is not in the planets. The mass is in the middle. Right. So we want to have a sun in the center, not on the outside and the planet in the center, which seems to be naturally what you might get. Yes. 